Hello, everybody. <laughs> Is this for real this time? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> All sorry. right. Well, ho hopefully this is for real and this is being archived. Welcome everybody to the Google for uh, Doodle for Google Hangout in partnership with Discovery Education. We are thrilled to have you here along with us. We have got uh, a fantastic panel to share with you today, including uh, some of the Go uh, Google Doodlers, including a judge from the Doodle for Google competition, including uh, a member of uh, Google Education's uh, team, and uh, three fantastic educators as well. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with some introductions, and we'll kind of go around the horn. Uh, let's start with uh, Ryan Germack. Um, hi, I'm Ryan, uh, Ryan Germack. I'm the lead of the Doodle team, and I'm excited to uh, be here talking about arts and education and Doodle for Google. All right, and we might as well just move off a little bit to the left of you. Uh, Jennifer, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jennifer Hom. I'm a doodler. I work for this guy, and I <laughs> draw doodles for Google. Excellent. And we also have one of the judges from the uh, competition, uh, Kazu. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Kazu Kibuishi. I'm the uh, illustrator and author of uh, the Amulet uh, graphic novel series, and I'm a judge this year for the Doodle for Google competition. Uh, fantastic. And uh, the one person who I don't think is an artist uh, from the Google team, uh, Jamie Kassif, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and explain your role at Google? Sure. How do you know I'm not an artist? Okay, my, well, my, <laughs> my, my name is Jamie Kassif, and I am part of the Google for Education team. Uh, and it's, I'm thrilled to be here, so I'm excited to, to get this thing going. Fantastic. So I, I apologize if you... Uh, are a doodler, amateur, or professional. Um, and we also have three fantastic educators uh, as well. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Gail Braddock. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Gail? Yes, I live in Germantown, Tennessee. We're outside of Memphis, Tennessee. And um, I love to use Google products, and I love to doodle with Google. I'm a Google certified teacher. Right on. And let's move a little bit over and move, uh, go to Selena Ward. Uh, Selena, you want to introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Selena Ward. I'm a DIN star, Google certified teacher, and a technology integration teacher in Bowie, Maryland. Fantastic. And last but certainly not least, Katie Warren. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Katie Warren. I am a teacher specialist in technology for the Glendale Unified School District. I'm a discovery educator and a Google certified teacher. Fantastic. Now, just for those of people that may be watching this right now that don't know what that is, uh, Katie, would you just tell us what a Google Certified Teacher means? A Google Certified Teacher means that you have attended training uh, at one of the Google Academies. And when I did it, it was one day of training. That was a few years ago. But now you get two days and sometimes three days. You learn all of the different Google apps and the products and how to integrate them in education. It's a wonderful experience. Fantastic. And uh, Gail, do you want to just explain real quick what a Star Discovery Educator is? A Star Discovery Educator is um, somebody who their school uses Discovery Education, and then they partake in three different um, events or things that would qualify them to be a Star Teacher. Now, Selena, we're talking today about uh, the arts in education and obviously the Doodle for Google program. I know you've got some experience with it. So where do you see kind of the arts fitting into education on the whole? Um, well, I think arts always bring out all the talents of students. And one of the skills that all students need is to be creative. It will help them no matter what job they have in life. Yeah. I, I, that's fantastic. Uh, anybody want to add to that? Uh, I'll concur with that with her on that. Um, I've I've been in all sorts of different fields. I've I've worked in architecture and film and and uh, uh, also in commercials and and movies and things. And I've I've, I've drawn in every uh, job I've had except for maybe retail. But I think they could have. They could have found something for me to do, like, like make a like a sign to sell things. But <laughs> yeah, there's no use for the guy who draws, you know. Well, so now that's an interesting kind of point, though, just because uh, you know, obviously the arts have evolved as technology has evolved. How do you? What do you see? Kind of the the relationship between uh, arts and technology right now? Because you can go ahead and take that. Okay, the uh, relationship between arts and technology. Um, 
I, I think the um, the what the biggest thing that technology brings to the arts is their ability to communicate with a lot of different people. Like just that we're no longer in 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 the in a vacuum. We can just post something online if it's if it's really impressive or um, it, it um, resonates with somebody. It may go out to a million people. You never know. Um, I think that that connection to the world is uh, is amazing because once you see um, a, a whole a large number of people react to the things you do, it really encourages you to continue with the art. And um, and that's I mean that's that's half the battle as an artist is to have that motivation or find motivation. And uh, I found it on online. Fantastic. Now, Ryan, obviously you're uh, you're a professional uh, doodler at this point. When did you uh, first kind of decide that you wanted to be an artist or make a living doing it? Uh, well, I was, uh, you know, um, I always drew when I was a kid, and it's just something I never stopped doing. Um, and uh, so in some ways I'm sort of a professional kid. But um, I think it, it really wasn't until, it really wasn't until, um, I remember I was 14 years old, and I got a, uh, for Christmas that year, all my Christmas presents were art related and it wasn't that I wanted to become an artist. I just realized because of my Bob Ross paint kit and my Vincent Van Gogh books that well, everybody else has taken a notice that I uh, am a creative person. And, um, you know, that, you know, I think that encouragement was one thing that sort of set me off on this path. I actually, I originally wanted to be a professional basketball player uh, and that did not pan out. Uh, and so I've fallen back onto uh, art as a <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, what about you? When did you first uh, decide, uh, know, realize that you wanted to be an artist? What was that kind of path like for you? Is that for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's for me. Okay. <laughs> um, I have always known that I wanted to be an artist. I never really thought that I was going to be anything else. Uh, probably just because I have art and design in my family. Uh, my father is an artist, and it goes back a couple of generations. So I just kept pursuing it, and I kept going to art schools. My mom kept supporting me for some strange reason. It was, I guess it was very insightful on her part because I was surprised that I was able to make a living, but I eventually found my way to Google because Ryan and my former coworkers happened to like my work. It's one, thing, one thing that happened to me that was interesting was I, I, had, I had one person in my family, my grandmother, who was very supportive. And, um, you know, all her children, all of my aunts and uncles on that side were all professional people, accountants and doctors and things like that, engineers. And my grandmother just told me, like, whatever, whatever you wanted to do, you know, you'll be successful in. And she just had this certainty that I would be successful. And that was incredibly encouraging and really felt liberating to, like, you know, there is a stigma, I think, in some respects against being an artist because it's an unsure path. Um, but in, when I had that support from people in my family, that made a lot of difference. Now, just in terms of you know, actual uh, schools, I mean, it's kind of a controversial topic because a lot of schools are kind of, you know, uh, it seems to be an easy program to eliminate when budgets are being cut. Uh, were there any sort of uh, significant experiences that you had as an artist in school that kind of stand out to you looking back on it? And uh, Jennifer, why don't we bounce over to you for that? Particular experience in school? Um, not sure, actually. Fair enough. How about you, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, for me, like, um, I, you know, I, I, I had, like, um, in my high school, you could have a pass for class to, like, uh, if you finish something um, early, you could go, like, go to art. You, I could go to the art class. So I basically always had, and my teacher would have to write a new one every day. And so I basically would always be armed with this pass. So if I finished my history class test early or my biology class test early or whatever, you know, I ended up I'd end up spending like three hours a day uh, making art in high school just because like I was really motivated to do it. So I think just having being able to like um, have that opportunity in school was just gigantic for me, and um, it's actually I think a tremendous tragedy. As was mentioned earlier, not just for people who end up in art as a career, but for people in any walk of life. You know, being able to express something creatively and communicate with others, as Kazu mentioned, um, and and kind of touch other people's lives is. An essential part of functioning in society, let alone you know, uh, you know, being uh, being in the professional arts. So. Fantastic. Um, oh, did you want to jump in, Jamie? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that I think that you know, from an education perspective, one of the things that I I, I I spend a lot of time in front of educators and talking at conferences, and 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 you guys are right on when we talk about creativity as being an important skill set. So creativity, problem solving, not only problem solving, but being able to identify problems, and being able to see where problems don't even exist and having that creativity 
uh, to solve those problems are absolutely critical. And art can be defined in lots of different ways, from designing great-looking technology to, you know, art that we do on Google Doodles to anything that that gets designed in, in manufacturing and so forth. So, for example, my daughter is in her second year of college, and and you mentioned the stigma of you know, being an artist and what that looks like. Even her, who who is an artist, she makes movies, she makes great short films and has won awards doing it. She uh, she had that stigma about going to college and being a marketing major because she didn't want to be an artist. She didn't want to be a, a film major because of the stigma that comes with that kind of career. And I encouraged her to actually follow her passion. So I think all of us are responsible for making sure that, you know, we find what what's passionate in our students and, and make sure that we push them in that direction. Fantastic. Um, Katie, so I thought I'd ask you about this. How do you in, 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 uh, infuse creativity and the arts within um, at school yourself? Well, because I'm not in the classroom, I can't answer that directly, but mm -hmm. I can influence the teachers. I hope I influence the teachers, encouraging them to include the arts, whether it be um, um, artistically with painting or with um, that type of artwork or music, any form of the arts. Um, I, in my own classroom, was able to take Friday mornings and make that the art day. And we would just work on art. We made an art portfolio. So once a week, we, f we concentrated on the art. It was great for me, too, because I'd never done that. And I learned about so many different artists and the methods that they used. And we would create something using that artist's method. Oh, that's great. So what about you, uh, Gail? Same kind of question. You know, what, what do you do to help see that uh, creativity and the arts are kind of infused in uh, classrooms? Well, um, I always tell the kids that it's important to put their my job is to help them put their best foot forward in their written and their oral language. Now, sometimes at schools might have an art teacher where they actually go to art class. But then um, I think the classroom teacher could use this as an activity just like he was saying a few minutes ago when he finished his work. Then he got to go to, art, to, to work on his art. Fantastic. So, obviously, oh, can I, oh, can I chime in? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, even though I'm the technology teacher this year, particularly, um, I have this huge creative area in the back. So, there's fabric, there's Legos, there's clay, there's markers, all types of paper. And when the students are creating their projects, they have at it. It looks like a chaos mess most days, but <laughs> the kids love it because they have choice, which they don't get all the time. So what, one thing I would add to that is, um, uh, is that, oh, sorry, Kazi, um, is, is that, you know, we work in, in, with engineers as well. So we're sort of a, we're a team of artists and engineers that work together as sort of the intersection of technology and art. And the way that the engineers work is very similar to the way that we work uh, and the kind of creative solutions they have to come up with you know, even in though they're using blocks of code and not like, you know, paintbrush or whatever, um, you know, still the same principles apply of thinking outside the box, thinking of multiple solutions to a problem and trying to do something that uh, is expressing an idea or making a tool for someone. And so I think that type of um, flexibility in your thinking and sort of, um, you know, using, applying that side of your brain, not just for, you know, rational thought and like, you know, number crunching is, is extremely important in the work that the engineers do at Google as well. Yeah. And Kazoo? Uh, yeah, I want to add that um, one one of the uh, one of the greatest things that an English teacher did for for me when I was um, when I was younger was that uh, she incorporated Jurassic Park as one of the uh, books to read. I mean, threw it in there along with some other um, literary classics. But it, it it I don't think a lot of kids understood at that time. I mean, a lot of the, my fellow classmates, we didn't realize that a lot of the literature that we're studying was initially made as entertainment. And, and to, to bring that into the context of the, the studies that we did, it, it, it actually you know, help, helped make us understand that, oh, man, we may be able to make some of the stuff that we consider fun. You know? And so um, to just break out of um, the regular mold a little bit and to think outside the box just a bit to, to make it so that the kids feel that when they're studying the arts, um, 
or uh, literature or whatnot. They're they're realizing that you know it, it it pertains to some of the things that they would do on their own, like that they would they would go out and read these books or or watch these movies, and then it brings in the fun element into school. And I, and I, th I think. I think the more that you can do that, the more involved the kids are going to be in, in the material that's being presented. I, I ran across a quote this morning um, that I thought I'd share. Um, it was in a book on Black History Month, and the quote is from Ossie Davis. It says, any form of art is a form of power. It has impact. It can affect change. It can not only move us, it can make us move. And I thought that was great, even though he's an actor and that's his art form, that he could look at it in the broad perspective of arts in general and any art. Fantastic. So, Jamie, a question for you. You know, Google is typically thought of as a, a, as a technology company. Where, where do the doodles kind of fit into things in your mind? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we, we said this a couple of times, but the intersection between... Google and technology and and you know I get to hear from I, I think the number one question I hear all the time when I'm out talking to students or talking to teachers is like who does the doodles like that that's like the number one question that always comes up and now I, I'm gonna be able to point to these guys and send them to them whenever I can but the, the, that's a question that always comes up because it's fascinating so we have to remember that there's a generation of kids that are now, you know, like my, I also have an 11 year old and he grew up with technology, you know, he's a child of the web. He's growing up not understanding that the world existed before Google. And so the intersection between Google and technology and, and art is we're at the place where I think technology can actually help not only encourage the discovery of art, like, you know, if you think about the Google art project and the fact that you can walk through any museum in the world, or the fact that every kid has a camera and a video camera and tools at their disposal to create things. And so the idea is that we can actually use technology to increase art. And so the, the, the doodles are one of those things that people look forward to. Uh, doodles are one of those things that students talk about all the time. It's, it's one of those conversation starters for a lot of reasons. I've actually gotten into hour-long conversations with students talking about their favorite doodles. And so it's, just, it's not only part of our culture, it's also part of this generation of kids that are growing up who look at those doodles on a daily basis when they come out. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I was just going to ask, uh, you know, you mentioned favorite doodles and such, and we happen to have two of the doodlers here right now, uh, Jennifer and uh, Ryan. Uh, you guys each want to share uh, what your personal favorite doodles have been over the years? What do you think? What's yours? Well, um, so I think, I mean, uh, I, I'm really pleased to hear that, that this is a that these can be conversation starters and yeah. and people um, you know get interested in the topics. I mean that's definitely something we're trying to do, and just shine a light on things we find are interesting. For me, I, on the other side of the glass or whatever, I get most interested when we create doodles that allow our users to be creative. So things like the Les Paul guitar, the Moog keyboard synthesizer. Or even in the, or even uh, when users could take ownership over something like one of the Olympics games where they get to try to compete for high score, I really get excited when I when I can see you know people kind of taking the doodle as their own and making something happen with it. We uh, we also had a doodle for Jim Henson where we created these digital puppets and um, all these videos on YouTube popped up of people like lip syncing songs and making little stories out of the puppets, um, you know, playing together and that's really gratifying to me because you know like uh, it means that something I something I helped create. Um, was something that someone else felt interested enough to engage with and share themselves. What about you, Jennifer? I think my favorite doodles um, are a little bit... They're, they're my favorites for different reasons, I think. Uh, my favorite doodle that I worked on wasn't even technically mine. It was the doodle for Charlie Chaplin that we worked on a, few, a couple of years ago. Um, the entire doodle team at the time was in this black and white movie that was in an homage to Charlie Chaplin, the silent film actor. Um, and that was a lot of fun just because it was a bonding experience with my team um, and that we were all sweating like crazy because it was like 90 degrees outside and we had to wear wool coats and hats for the scenes. Um, but that's the favorite one that I worked on uh, for someone else, for Ryan. <laughs> and uh, Probably the favorite one that I did was either for Freddie Mercury or for The Adventures of Little Nemo in Summerland. Just because I love those two things. I love Winter McKay who did... Uh, the comic Little Nemo, and I love Queen and Freddie Mercury. 
<laughs> it was amazing to listen to the same 90 seconds of music and still not get sick of it after four months. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, obviously, what's kind of the reason we're doing this uh, Hangout right now is that the competition, Doodle for Google, is open. Because uh, you want to give us a, just kind of a little, you're one of the judges this year. Do you want to give us a, just kind of a broad overview about what the competition is all about? Um, it is, uh, what is it, uh, my favorite day? It's like uh, just a... <laughs> best day <laughs> ever. Best day ever, yeah. Best day ever, that's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do my homework, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm just curious to see what comes in. It's a pretty open. It's a pretty open uh, subject matter, so you can pretty much draw whatever you want. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, that's that's it. I think just go wild. I, I want to see what happens. <laughs> I mean, that's. Is, is there is there any other technical information I should? Oh, no, I, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, know. <laughs> I like no, that's fine. fine. I mean, it's, it, it, it's a competition. It's open to K through 12 students, and uh, the overall winner is going to wind up receiving a um, uh, $30,000 college scholarship, a $50,000 technology grant for their school, and even, and to be honest, the, the, the most prestigious part is their actual doodle will appear on the uh, Google search page, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, they'll be accepting an award <laughs> in uh, New York City at the... Uh, I think the um, what is it the the, the natural history museum is it? Which, yeah, wow. there'll be an award ceremony that uh, on May twenty second for all the finalists. May yeah, in New York. Yeah, so um, we'll be presenting the check and um, and getting to meet the doodler. Just great. Now, Selena, you you've had students that have participated in this in the past, right? So how how did you wind up structuring that between you and your students? Um, every time they get super excited when the contest comes near, they come running to me finding out what the theme is. Um, the only thing I've found in the past is that they're so excited to draw that they don't think about the question. So I actually I give them the question ahead of time, let them do a little brainstorming, kind of plot out what they're going to do, and that kind of leads them into what kind of objects are they going to draw, how does that relate to the letters, so it kind of gets them really thinking before they just hop in and start drawing. Right on. Yeah, I, I, I would, um, one of the things that I do is, I obviously I, I push through my social networks and at conferences and places that I talk, I talk about the doodle contest and I, and, and, and I think it's a great opportunity uh, to, to, to remind kids that they are creative geniuses. You know, Gordon McKenzie, who wrote this book called Orbiting a Giant Hairball, talks about how he was an artist, he was a metal sculpturist, and he would go into classes and ask how many artists we had in the class, and in first grade, every kid raises their hand, but by the time they got to sixth grade, maybe one or two kids raised their hand. And I think this is a great opportunity to remind these kids that create that that most humans don't lose their creativity by sixth grade, that, that they actually have to keep on it and keep working on it. And so being able to use the contest as an opportunity to open up their minds and look at art in a, in a completely different way and express themselves in, in maybe in a way they haven't expressed themselves in a couple of years gives them that opportunity. So it's exciting to be able to share this with educators and parents and students themselves and talk to them about you know putting out their, their even if they think it's the worst thing in the world. And by the way, I mean, you said I, I wasn't an artist. This is my art right here. That's the best I can do right there. And, and, and so being able to, and, and that's okay, and just being able to create whatever you can uh, and express yourself in any way you can is, is, is wonderful. And so being able to remind kids of that is, is I think, is what the real benefit of the, Google, uh, the Doodle contest is. I love the theme of the contest this year, the best day ever, because it's such kind of an open-ended question. And, uh, you know, regardless of what you're, whether you're a kindergarten uh, student or, you know, a senior in high school, you know, everybody's had a best day. Everybody can kind of reflect on that. But at the same time, there is kind of a structure to it. Uh, Carson, in the comments uh, for this Hangout, uh, was asking whether the, the, whether the drawings have to have the Google logo in it or, uh, you know, anything along those lines. So maybe, Ryan, you know, and Jennifer, do you, do you guys have any tips for kids that are trying to put together their drawing and submit it? Um, any suggestions for them? <laughs> well, it is Doodle for Google, and it will appear as our logo on the homepage. So, yes, it does have to have the letters in it. Um, how you integrate that into the rest of the drawing is up to you. And that's actually the part that excites me the most, seeing all the creativity that goes into the entire composition and not just um, what the best day ever is, but how that is integrated into the entire logo. I remember last year's winner, um, Dylan from, uh, from Wisconsin, I think he's 10, he drew a picture of uh, a pirate 
And it, it, last year was more about time travel, and if you could see any era, what would you see? You wanted to see pirate times. And I was, it was <laughs> so a, specific. a beautiful drawing, and I was particularly impressed with the way the neck beard of the pirate integrated with the, lo the lower part of the top of the lowercase g. I think those kind of details where you actually, you know, really consider how you're going to interpret these forms to fit into your idea, um, you know, that's that's what really gets us most excited when we see these things. So that's that's the challenge that we have every day. Like, how do you turn a Pac-Man game into a Google logo? That's sort of you know what we're trying to solve for. Yeah, limitations often bring out some of the best work in artists. You know. Yeah. Exactly. It's very you funny to have those limitations. Definitely feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, so because I, I I don't uh, envy you as a, a judge, because I got to imagine there's got to be a lot of uh, really great entries in here. Um, so Gail, uh, are, are you planning on doing this with your students? You uh, do you think uh, any kids from your school are going to be uh, participating in the uh, Doodle for Google challenge? Oh, definitely for sure. And one thing that teachers could do would be to mind map some ideas, let the kids brainstorm on paper, whatever way they do best. But you know they could mind map it. And then make sure you have plenty of copies of the Google logo so that they don't have to worry about making a mistake. They might have to, you know, try several times. I'll say one thing is that you, you don't have to feel too married to the actual, like, exact logo. Or the piece of paper. Or the piece of paper. You know, if you want to make a sculpture out of, like, a silly string or something, that's totally fine. Uh, take a picture of it, send it in. You don't need to, um, you don't need to have, uh, you know, the exact letter forms of Google in there. Um, um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm being told you can't do 3D. <laughs> uh, if I see it, I'll let it slide. But, um, but for certainly you don't have to, like, you know, you can see if you're watching this on the Google Hangout, you can see in the top left-hand corner there's this little sharp Google logo with the right points. and the, You don't have to do that. Like, we are always messing up the logo. It's actually a big part of the fun. It should sort of say Google a little bit. But, you know, like, the integration is where it really is. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm flexible with that. But, um, well, it might, be, it might be a good idea to post some of those kind of, like, logos that you're talking about that, that show yeah. that creativity. Well, you know, you can see, uh, you know, folks uh, can always check out google.com slash doodles, and there's over 1,500 doodles that we've done. Every single one. Some of them are a real stretch to say Google. <laughs> All right. Uh, some I'm of like Jennifer's that. in particular. There's so much. Are a real stretch to say Google. <laughs> But, you know, it's really about that creative, you know, the having the limitations but also pushing those limitations are really, you know, sort of where creativity happens. Fantastic. Yeah, and if you go to google.com slash doodle for Google, that's the number four, uh, they, they have kind of a rotating banner that has oh, some of the winners from previous years, and you can kind of scroll through those. And uh, you'll also see a countdown timer that lets you know how many, uh, uh, how long you have to get your entry in, which in this case right now is 37 days, 4 hours, 31 minutes, 45 seconds, <laughs> just in case you're keeping track at home. Depending on your time zone? Well, dep I, I don't know. No, it doesn't matter. because <laughs> First 20 seconds, but you There you go. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to kind of get things uh, wrapped up. Do any of you have any uh, last thoughts for any uh, students that are thinking about uh, participating or any educators that are going to try and do this with their students? Uh, yeah. Um, also, don't worry if you don't win. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't win one art contest when I was a kid. I had entered every one that I could I could find, and I always lost. Yeah, so, me too. So it's, it's totally okay. It's just just the act of going in and getting getting your stuff out there and doing something is just a it's a wonderful thing. So. Um, and and I, I I would say that I know some of, there's been um, some classes that have you know. Students have submitted their their entries, but also they make a copy of that entry, and then they do their own classroom contests for their for the students, which is another kind of idea that they that that teachers can do as well. Yes, one, 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 thing I would note, one thing I would notice um, is also just uh, for the students out there that might be watching, or the teachers that are coaching the students, like be original, like really, you know, go out there and do something really uh, interesting, like. Um, uh, you know, if you're if you're if you're doing something that looks a lot like your neighbors, and you're probably you know not stretching your imagination as far as you can go, and re really do something that's unique to you and that really speaks to you, and and I think you'll find if you do something that you really love, the chances of someone else really loving it are are all that much better. So actually, we did have one other question, which I just thought I, I I'd kind of just throw in, so long as you were talking about all the different ways that people can do this. Um, 
you know, is, is there, does this need to be done digitally? Can this be done physically using crayons? Can this be done online using uh, software? Um, yeah, go for it. Just like with Google Doodles, like, um, you know, Jennifer did a doodle for Google Klimt earlier last year. That was actually a painting. She even had, like, you know, gold leaf. Well, fake gold leaf. We wouldn't spring for the real stuff. Why not? Um, <laughs> she tried to expense it. I wouldn't let that happen. But, um, but you know, or it could be in uh, digital or, you know, macaroni noodles, whatever. Um, <gasps> You know, whatever noodle you, doodle. Noodle doodle. Whatever you can do to, uh, you know, express yourself. We're, we're, we're medium agnostic. Except for That's 3D. Awesome. But otherwise, <laughs> you're good. Fantastic. Uh, and I actually, she just had a question pop out, or just uh, someone pointed out that uh, when we were talking about kind of favorite doodles and all that, that uh, sometimes they're different from country to country, and to kind of keep an eye out uh, uh, for that, because sometimes some of them, the really interesting ones may not necessarily appear on your own search page, depending on where in the world you are. So uh, it's about time for us to wrap up, but if you want uh, some more time with uh, the Google, uh, the Doodle for Google team and the Google Doodlers and so on, we've got one other event that is coming up. Um, I, we are going to be doing a live virtual field trip from the Googleplex on Friday, March 1st. So we're going to be doing a live broadcast there, and uh, amongst other things, we're going to be giving you a behind-the-scenes tour, doing some interviews with uh, some of the Google Doodlers, and we're also going to do have a uh, live, I'm not sure what the right term for it is, doodle off, uh, <laughs> a competition between two of the Doodlers, uh, with the winner being decided by uh, the audience, by a live vote. If you want to attend that virtual field trip, you can go to discoveryeducation.com slash uh, doodle for Google. Once again, that's doodle, the number four, uh, Google. And uh, you'll get all the information to register there. And you can also have you, you uh, yourself as an educator or as an uh, audience member or your students can actually uh, log uh, their questions there uh, to be asked during the virtual field trip. So we definitely hope that you'll get a chance to uh, attend that on Friday, March 1st. And then don't forget, the deadline for the competition is March 22nd. So make sure you get started early. It's only 37 days away. And we certainly hope that your designs uh, will be in the competition. So I want to thank everybody for participating today. I think this was a great conversation. I really appreciate Ryan, Jennifer, Jamie, and uh, Kazoo for joining us, and also our educators, uh, Gail and Selena and Katie. Uh, thanks all of you for sharing your thoughts and ideas, and uh, we hope to see you at the virtual field trip and hope to see your students work in the Doodle for Google competition. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.